Zima board is a new SBC or single board computer, but it's one with a difference. All SBCs are small, some are quite powerful, and some can even do things that big computers can do. But the Zima board is something a little bit special. You see, while most SBCs are content to style themselves as a computer, a low powered basic computer. No, Zima board has a claim which few others can assert with a straight face. It calls itself a server. Is this the first server that you can put in a coat pocket? Let's find out. The Zima board comes nicely packed in an origami style box, which starts to give you the idea this is not a normal SBC. Unfolding the box reveals the actual box, which is responsibly easily recycled. Inside the inner box is the Zima board itself and a SATA cable for attaching any outboard storage. The power supply has detachable heads to suit US, Euro and UK plug sockets. For some reason, the UK plug is what I would call as a UK resident upside down. And this is a mistake most non-UK manufacturers make. It's okay on a floor mounted four way, but plugged into a wall, the cable comes out of the top. This is, however, a very minor problem. Inside the box, you'll find the Zima board computer, a power brick with interchangeable plugs and a SATA cable. And that's it. In addition to these items in the main box, I also received a bracket or stand for the hard drive a SATA Y cable, which I assume is for attaching more than one drive to the server, and a mini display port to HDMI connector in case you find you need to attach it to a monitor. One thing I didn't get, which I was expecting, was the little brass standoffs I saw on the website when the unit was in use, which raised the body of the computer off the desk. The underside of the computer is a, a shiny acrylic plastic susceptible to sliding about and scratching, so I was very surprised these weren't included. You could put the thing upside down on its cooling fins, but that just seems weird. Setup is easy. Just plug the power and the Ethernet cables in and it starts up. After a fast boot, you can access the machine on any computer of your local network by typing CASA OS local and you're shown the desktop. Initially, you're asked to pick a username and password and after that, it'll just ask you for the password. What you do with it after that is entirely up to you. It has CASA OS, CASA meaning home, of course, to allow it to function as a home cloud server. And that is its primary use out of the box. But you can add almost any OS you like, Windows, Ubuntu, Debian, Raspberry Pi OS, and CentOS being the primary candidates other than CASA OS. They've gone to a lot of trouble to make this thing easy and quick to maintain and use. And the surface level of the server out of the box is very simple to use with CASA OS. It's all pretty locked down though, so you can't wander about in the system and start messing things up, a sort of approach we've gotten used to with makers like Apple. There are, however, hidden depths. If you want to, you can totally wipe the thing and start afresh with a new OS. This is where it starts to get hackable. However, it's not immediately obvious, and there's no documentation to help apart from the Discord community, of how you might go about opening a terminal or wiping the computer and installing your own OS. It's possible, of course, but it's not obvious. If I had any major criticism, it's that. Although it's a very robust and fast and easy to maintain system out of the box, the hackability which is advertised isn't very easy to access. But then I guess if hacking stuff is your focus, then a few roadblocks in your way just adds to the fun. The Zima board runs an Intel Celeron 1.1 GHz N3450 processor with four cores and the Geekbench single core scores were typically in the range of 280 to 322 and the multi-core score in the region of 903 and 1105. It's got some juice, shall we say. That compares favourably to, let's say, another computer I have here in my office, my Mac Mini, late 2012. Compare that to a Raspberry Pi 4, which scores around 200 for a single core and 600 for multi-cores. The Zima board is a respectably fast computer for its size. The version I was sent is the Zima board 832 package with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. That package will cost you $199.90. There are two levels lower than that, the $159.90 Zima board 432 package with about half the RAM and the base level unit, the $119.90 Zima board 216 with just two gigabytes of RAM and a 16 gigabyte solid state disk. If I had to sum up the Zima board in a few words, I would say this. Zima board is a small, fast and robustly built little server system for all your home cloud, media server, file server and home automation needs. Is it easily hackable? Yes.
but you may have to work a little bit to figure that out. Of course, most people won't want to nuke it from the start and install an all new operating system. For my money, it's a tremendous turnkey home server system that is open to hacking, but also nicely buttoned up in case your aspirations outstrip your technical savvy. Okay, that's all for now. I will see you next time.